This is the Angle Identities tutorial. In trigonometry, there are quite a few angle identities. There's a couple subcategories here. There's angle difference identities, angle sum identities, negative angle identities, and cofunction identities. Now, I'm not going to take the time to read each of these to you. However, I am going to tell you that you're going to need to memorize these at one point in time or another. Some of you have teachers who will allow you to use these during exams, and some of you don't. It's important that you know these for your exams, however, no matter what, and it's easiest if you just memorize them. In order to memorize them, it takes a lot of practice, so I suggest that you go above and beyond the required homework and spend some time just doing problems over and over with these until they become like clockwork for you, until you've really got them down. Now, for the vast majority of you, they don't necessarily have future implications for your work, aside from the next quiz or exam, so that should be enough to get you motivated to do it. However, if you treat them like a puzzle, these future problems like a puzzle, and these are the different components to the puzzle, these different identities, then it'll actually help you deal with the problems and deal with them in a better manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these now, and I'm going to walk through problems with you. What I recommend you do is write them down and keep them with you as we go over these problems so that you can take a look at what I'm doing and compare them to your notes on these different identities. Keep them with you when you're doing your homework and keep them with you if you can during an exam. So we're going to begin this tutorial by me walking you through a negative angle identity. I'm going to ask you to verify one of them. So if you would, I'd like you to verify this following identity. And we're going to go through it slowly together. I think the easiest way to verify this identity is to begin with the unit circle and give you a little bit of background on this information. Now it's important to note that this is not only a negative identity, but also a cofunction identity problem. So we're going to be using a little bit of information from both of those two categories of angle identities. Let's begin by running through a little bit of obvious information that you should know by this point. So first of all, you should know that on the left here we have the unit circle. And you know that any angle drawn in standard position is going to have a measurement of theta, theta being just a variable amount. So an undefined amount here exactly. So if I draw in this angle, you should know that we can identify this angle as being theta. We don't necessarily need to know the degrees, we can simply call it theta, which is simply like the theta that you see here in our problem. You should also know that if this point here on the terminal side of this angle intersects the circle at point A, then the x value of this point on the circle can be defined as cosine theta, and the y value of this point on the circle can be defined as sine theta. Now, this is an angle drawn in standard position, meaning that one of the rays on that angle begins on the x-axis. What you may not have seen before, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal, is what happens when an angle is drawn on the y-axis. So I'm going to draw an angle in a position where one of the rays is actually drawn on the y-axis. Now if you note our red angle here, theta, it goes counterclockwise, which is the standard positive direction of any angle. However, our green angle here, and I'm going to refer to this as pi over 2 minus theta, this one is going clockwise, so it's opening up from the y-axis here, and it's opening up to the right, so it's opening up clockwise. So notice that the distance traveled in radians at 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. So this angle could be considered to be pi over 2 radians minus theta. They're both opening up, both the green angle and the red angle are opening up by a measure of theta. However, the red angle is opening up counterclockwise, which is positive theta, which is why this is a positive theta here. And the green angle is opening up to the right, so counterclockwise, which is why it's a negative theta. And we're beginning at pi over 2 radians, so pi over 2 radians minus theta in radian degrees. So hopefully you're still with me at this moment. And you can take a look down here at where this point intersects the circle. And for the sake of consistency, we can just say that this is point B, where it's intersecting the circle. Now the value of point B's point here on the circle, the x value is the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, because that's the distance traveled here, and the y value has a value of sine times pi over 2 minus theta. Both of these angles open up by a measurement of theta. One just begins at the y-axis, so pi over 2 radians, 
and goes clockwise, so in the negative direction, and the other begins at the x-axis and goes counterclockwise, so in the positive direction. Now if you were to draw a line on the x equals y plane, so just right through here like that on the blue line, and you were to reflect this angle across, what would happen is if you recall your geometry reflections, when you reflect an angle across the x equals y line of symmetry, the x and the y change positions. So what you could say is that the sine of pi over 2 minus theta is actually equal to cosine theta because reflecting this green angle right here across the x equals y plane is going to cause the y coordinate to be the same exact coordinate here as the x coordinate on our red angle and our x coordinate point here on our green angle pi over 2 minus theta is actually going to be equal to the y coordinate here because we're reflecting across that line x equals y. Knowing that should be helpful in verifying this identity. So we took a moment to go over that because that's, first of all, it's verifying co-function identities, but secondly, it's going to help us verify this identity. So we're dealing with the cosine of theta minus pi over 2. Now notice that's the opposite of what we have over here. We have pi over 2 minus theta, so the signs have been flipped. And you'll notice that this sign is flipped now. So cosine of pi over 2 minus theta used to be equal to sine of theta, which we proved just a moment ago. And now we're suggesting that cosine of theta minus pi over 2 is equal to negative sine of theta. So what I want to do is make this top equation look like this right here. So I'm going to multiply each side by a negative 1. So it's going to look something like this. The cosine, and I'm multiplying negative 1 through everything here, so theta minus pi over 2 is equal to a negative 1 times a negative sine of theta. So on the left, negative 1 times theta is negative theta, and negative 1 times a negative pi over 2 is a positive pi over 2. So we have cosine of positive pi over 2 minus theta, and on the right, negative 1 times a negative sine of theta is a positive sine of theta. And this is exactly like what we just proved a moment ago. So now we've actually verified that identity. So you'll notice here that doing these problems is just like figuring out a puzzle. You look at what you're given and you look at what you're trying to get to. It's like giving someone a bunch of puzzle pieces and then a picture on the front of the box of what the puzzle should look like and saying, here are all the pieces to solve this puzzle. I want you to put them together in some way so that you end up at this final image. That's what we're going for. We've given you the final image by giving you all the different identities. Then we give you some jumbled identity here and we ask you to use those pieces to arrive at that following picture, the end game that you want to get to. So now let's take a look at another problem. All right. So in this problem, I'd like you to find the exact value of the following trig functions using a sum or difference identity. And remember, I'm not expecting you to have those angle identities memorized just yet from the beginning of this tutorial. Keep them next to you to help you do these problems. So let's begin with the tangent of 75 degrees. And for this problem, I'm going to use a difference identity. And I'm going to go ahead and use the tangent difference identity. I'm also going to use this unit circle to help show what I'm doing here. So we're going to use the difference identity for tangent functions. So the tangent of angle A minus angle B is equal to the tangent of angle A minus the tangent of angle B all over 1 plus the tangent of angle A times the tangent of angle B. So we want two angles that are going to come together in a difference to make 75. So I could take 120 degrees minus 45 degrees, and that would get 75 degrees. So I'm going to say the tangent of angle A, which we're suggesting is 120 degrees, minus angle B, which is 45 degrees. Now I just chose these two because they happen to have a difference of 75 degrees. 
So when you're given difference in some identity problems, you want to find two angles that either add up to the angle that you're looking for, if it's a sum identity, or subtract to find the angle that you're looking for if you're using a difference identity. So I chose these two because 120 minus 45 is 75, which is what we're looking for. Now we know we can plug those in. The tangent of 120 degrees, because that's our A, minus the tangent of 45 degrees, because that's our B, all over 1 plus the tangent of our A, which is 120, times the tangent of our B, which is 45. Now we're going to get those tangent values from our unit circle. So I'm going to bring this part of the problem over here, and we're going to ignore this for the moment because we know that that's the tangent of 75. And we're trying to establish what that tangent of 75 is equal to as an exact value. So we've got the tangent of 120 degrees. So I'll go to 120 degrees here on our unit circle. And remember, the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine. So in this case, our sine is root 3 over 2, and we're dividing that by our cosine, which is negative 1 half. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction, so a negative 2 over 1 here. So we have negative 2 root 3 on top over 2. And negative 2 over 2 here, the 2's are going to cancel, so this has a value of just negative root 3. So I'll go ahead and put that negative root 3 down for our tangent of 120 degrees. Negative root 3. Now we want to look at subtracting tangent of 45 from that. So I'll subtract here. And again, we're going to look to our unit circle. So we're taking the tangent of 45 degrees. So here's 45 degrees on our unit circle. And again, tangent is our sine, which is root 2 over 2, divided by our cosine, which is our x-coordinate here which is also root 2 over 2. Anything divided by itself is 1, so the tangent of 45 is 1, so we're subtracting 1 on top. Now let's take a look at our denominator. So we have that 1 again, so that's going to come down here, then plus tangent of 120 times tangent of 45. Now remember, negative th root 3 was our tangent of 120 degrees, and 1 was our tangent of 45 degrees. So tangent, times one, tangent of 120 times tangent of 45 is negative root 3 times 1. So that's a plus, because that's our plus here, negative root 3 times 1, which is just negative root 3. So we might as well just say that that's 1 minus root 3. All right, so now we have negative root 3 minus 1 over 1 minus root 3. I don't want an irrational number in our denominator, so I'm going to multiply by a 1 plus root 3 over 1 plus root 3. Now remember, in this step, we want to FOIL these. FOIL the top and then FOIL the bottom. So if we FOIL the top, we have 1 times negative root 3, which is negative root 3, plus a negative root 3 times root 3, which is a negative 3, so plus a negative 3, which is minus 3. Then negative 1 times 1, so minus 1. And then negative 1 times root 3, so minus root 3. Then we're going to FOIL on the bottom, so we'll do the first again. 1 times 1 is 1. Then the outside, 1 times root 3 is positive root 3. Then the inside, negative root 3 times 1 is negative root 3. And then finally, the last, negative root 3 times root 3, which gives us a negative 3. So let's see if we can simplify a little bit. On top, negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. And negative root 3 minus root 3 is a negative 2 root 3. On the bottom, our positive root 3 and our negative root 3 canceled each other out we have 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Now you'll notice that I can take a negative 2 out of both of the top terms. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2. And negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1. So our answer is 2 plus 1 root 3. So 2 plus 1 root 3 is all equal to the tangent of 75. 2 plus 1 root 3. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the cosine of 105 degrees. And for this problem, I'd like you to use an angle sum identity since we just used an angle difference identity. So we're obviously going to use the cosine angle sum identity, which is the cosine of a plus b is equal to the cosine of angle a times the cosine of angle b minus the sine of angle a times the sine of angle b. So what we're looking for is two angles, a and b, that add up to be 105. Well, 60 degrees plus 45 degrees adds up to be 105 degrees, so let's use those two. The cosine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. So we have the cosine of A, which is 60 degrees, times the cosine of B, which is 45 degrees, minus the sine of A, which is 60 degrees, times the sine of B, which is 45 degrees. So let's ignore what we have on the left here because that's just the cosine of 105 degrees and that's what we're solving for. Everything on the right right here is going to be what the cosine of 105 degrees is as an exact value. So we can say the cosine of 60 degrees, that's our x coordinate at 60 degrees, so 1 half, times our cosine of 45 degrees. So the cosine of 45 degrees is our x coordinate here, root 2 over 2. So times root 2 over 2. When you multiply those two fractions together, you have root 2 on top and 4 on the bottom. So the cosine of 60 times the cosine of 45 is simply root 2 over 4. Now we want to subtract the sine of 60 times the sine of 45. So we're going to subtract the sine of 60 which is our y coordinate here, root 3 over 2, times the sine of 45. So our y coordinate is 45 degrees, which is root 2 over 2. So root 3 times root 2 is root 6, and 2 times 2 is 4, so we have root 6 over 4 for this. So root 6 over 4. Now we have two fractions with a common denominator, so we can actually subtract them. So root 2 minus root 6 is simply root 2 minus root 6, all over that common denominator of 4. So the cosine of 105 degrees as an exact value is root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Remember, you could simply put in cosine of 105 degrees into your calculator and get an answer. However, it's going to be a decimal answer that's non-terminating, so it's never going to be as exact as this value that we've just derived here.